Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to show you how to read codes without a code reader on your Mitsubishi Fuso Cantor. Now this process can seem to be a bit of a puzzle, so make sure you stay tuned through the whole video because there are key pieces of information that you will need in order to make this work. Well, everybody knows you need a code reader to get the codes out of your car or truck, right? Well, that's not quite the case. While this is a very easy way to plug in and get a code, this type of code reader does not read all of the Mitsubishi Fuso codes. This type of code reader does, but it's very expensive. But there's a third way of getting codes that doesn't require either one of those tools. Now, this is a two-part process, but step one takes place in the cab. All right, so step one, you're gonna need your key in the ignition, in the on, but not run position. So as you can see, we've got a number of lights lit up and what we want to do is enter the diagnostic mode. What I've done is I've labeled these buttons down here to make it easier to follow along. What we want to do to enter the diagnostic mode is press mode, select, and set resume together, and then release them. Next it says select ECU, and the default is engine. If you use the select button, you can scroll through which computer you're going to pull the codes from. You can see it's all scrolling through, so you want to check each of these if you've got any kind of problem. If you know where the problem is coming from, then you can automatically just go straight to it. Otherwise, you're going to want to select each of them individually. So let's go to brakes. So once we're on that one, we want to press set resume to enter it. Let's press select to go through which types of codes or whether we want to erase. So are there active codes, are there confirmed codes, or do we want to clear the codes? So this is all with the select button. We want to press set resume to see the active codes, and it's going to give the SPN and FMI, and that's what you want to pull. So 521331, is the suspect parameter number, and 10 is the failure mode indicator. So 521331, 10. That's what you want to write down. If there's more than one code, it's going to alternate. Every three seconds, you'll see a different code. So if I hit mode, <clears throat> this is again active, select, sorry, confirmed, I want to hit set. That's the same code, so it's being confirmed. I also have 7892. Okay, so now there are two confirmed codes. So I'm also going to write down 789-2. So I'm just going to work with those two codes. Uh, any of the modules that you go into will show codes in this manner. And getting into all the modules is the same at this point. So now that you've got the codes, you need to decode the codes. The best place to do this is going to be in the FUSO repair manual. You can find it online at a number of places, and I'll put a link in the description to below to one of the websites that I found where it's only about 10 bucks. You can't beat that for the information that's in there. Now, if you really don't want to spend 10 bucks to figure out why your truck isn't working or what the code is, you can always go to the dealer and have them sort it out for you. I think you'll find that costs more than $10. By the way, the links are not mine, they're just links that I've found. I have no affiliation with them. What you will find is that several of the codes are a generic code, which means they work across all different manufacturers and they're fairly easy to find online. I'll put a link in the description to some generic codes that are used across other manufacturers that also work on Mitsubishi. So for some reason, Mitsubishi doesn't have a list of codes published specifically for this truck. Even the ones that are in the repair manual don't seem to cover everything. So you will have to rely a little bit on Google and 
possibly even calling up a Fuso dealer to find out a specific code if you can't find it listed in the repair manual or in one of the generic lists. I will also put a link below on how to do what I just did because sometimes it's a little hard to follow along the video. There is a small PDF that Fuso has published that shows the process and how to go through it. There's also going to be a link in the video description to the SAM codes. SAM is a signal activation module, so if you have a burned out light or some short in a wiring harness, those codes are in there as well and it'll give you those. And Mitsubishi has published the SAM codes in a PDF, so there will be a, a link to that PDF as well. So what about the two codes that I pulled for the ABS? Well, I searched through the PDF manual and I found 5213310 is component B62 acceleration sensor has an electrical fault. And it says possible causes are defective sensor, defective harness, or defective hydraulic unit. And I have a feeling it's probably more likely that I've turned the ignition on with a battery that's too low or turned it on and off several times and had a sensor unplugged. But I'll go through and clear the code and see if it comes back. The other code that I had was 789-2. Again, I did a search in the PDF of the repair manual and I came up with the signal from B3 wheel speed sensor, left front axle is faulty. So that's a pretty big narrowing down of where the problem is. Again, what can cause it? It says ABS rotor is dented or missing a tooth. Highly possible, I know where to look. Wheel speed sensor is not installed properly. Okay, so it's maybe not reading the teeth as they go by. Radio interference, I would see that as a possibility if I was Driving in or out of here with my welder or my plasma cutter turned on, that could potentially have caused the problem. So those are where the manual is telling me to look and what to look for. Now, on the first code, 5213310, you need to know where that component is. And unfortunately, the PDF manual isn't really going to show you that. I have Zentry, which is what the dealer uses, and it actually can show me that the ABS control unit installation location, which is either up under the dash or in behind the front fascia on the truck. So I'll have to dig a little bit if I can't clear that code and leave it cleared. But that's basically how you can troubleshoot all of this I did without any OBD2 reader. I didn't use the, the Zentry, um, sorry, the Fuso Connect and the Sentry software to read any codes. This is purely reading the codes, the SPN FMIs that come up on the dash and knowing where to find the information on how to decode those SPNs and FMIs. I hope that video helps. It's really a lot of information. If you can read those codes and use the PDF, you're gonna get a lot of information to help you diagnose where these problems are. Try that before you go to the dealer. If you can't resolve it, you may have to end up going to the dealer, but at least you're going to know what the problems are. Even if you can call the dealer up with your SPN and FMI and say, hey, can you tell me what this is and where to look because I can't get the truck to you, if that's what you want to do. Or you can at least look it up and know when you take it to the dealer, when they tell you the same problem, you know, hey, I read that code. I know what's going on here. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped. If it did, give us a thumbs up, throw a comment down below. Share the video if you think it'll help someone because this kind of thing should be public information. These codes are there. The PDFs are out there. People should be able to work on their own vehicles. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to check the video description for the links that I mentioned earlier. They are the key to understanding how to make all this work.